What's up people one up punch here so I'm going to talk about tactical assault VR mainly because I wanted to talk about the mission that they put inside the game there was a recent update to where they added this operation called operation hammer fire and it says that you have to destroy a downed helicopter by planting c4 on it eliminating a high value target and then exfiltrating from the mission they also added a couple new guns light machine guns there's about three of them they have the I think from the listing was FN mag mini me and pkm they also added a couple of sites like the ta31 the rmr 4x acog a acro red dot and some other things there as well for replacing and updating the models of the guns themselves each light machine gun has its own different fire rate i think every single one of them has 150 to 200 rounds each and i think it's the pkm that's a slow fire rating uh, light machine gun and then we talk about the mission itself when you first start off Operation Hammerfire, there's actually a wall that will tell you what's going on, like what to do, and there'll be a security camera there, this thing here. What this thing does is allows you to zoom in and out, seeing anything that's like super beyond your own vision, and then you can see like enemies walking around. You can't really record them unless you have a specific kind of like option open, but then I started playing it more and I started to use night vision. When you get more into Operation Hammer Fire, you're going down this long kind of dirt road, and there's going to be different buildings on either side of you. When you first come out on the left-hand side, is a car, and then some enemies that are near it. I did not know this until a guy popped out at the mid of the uh, two cars between, and then when you go beyond this to the other side, the right-hand side where their tower is, there's a couple of enemies there. The whole mission is essentially you going to a objective point to where there's like an orange or red circle and then when you pick that up that's the objective for the c4 once you go to the circle and pick up the c4 then you have to take it to the helicopter reminder that you do not press the button until you get to the helicopter because once it is detonated prematurely then you can't do anything in the missions over and you have to redo it over again i made that decision when i pressed the button accidentally because i was trying to put it in my inventory and i threw it away and it detonated and said mission failed because i didn't know where to go and it would show up with a yellow marker to where you have to plant it the high value target kind of looks like osama bin laden if he was like play-doh kind of and or like their own type of way of like npcs being in this game they're not like realistic they kind of look like voxel but then again not really a big issue for me because i did like coming back to tactical assault vr the other thing I want to talk about was the update previously before this one, where they added a couple new guns I didn't talk about that one. For example, the G36C, the AUG rifle that I was using earlier, the 416, the AKM Classic, the M4A1, and the PP19 SMG. These were all added in the previous update before Operation Hammerfire, and this was the .7.0 weapons update. I don't know if there's going to be any more later on. They did do a bunch of other replacements and model upgrades, trying to talk about some new stuff with the sniper rifles, adding some more things for the Mark 12 and the M40, and then they have all the missions except for just the Operation Hammerfire, which was number six, and then the other five, which was like Void and Streets and some other places. I haven't really played the game very much, and it's been a while since coming back to it. But anyway, there were other things that they added into the game. For example, they updated the SMGs themselves, UMP-45, P90, MP5, MP7, MP9. They also added some multiplayer additions, for example, Vote Kicking System, a PvP Auto Team Balance, Direct Action Multiplayer Co-op Lobby, a knife kills now count as kills or team kills, and sledgehammer kills against enemy AI now count as kills. They added a major doors rework with massive under the hood improvements. I don't know what that exactly means because whenever you go up to a door, normally the only way to open it is by using the butt of the rifle first, and then you open up the door. Otherwise, it's breaching charge or a hand grenade in order for them to blow up. Another thing that happened with the Operation Hammerfire update was the hardcore mode. This is for basically people that want to get into more serious firefights that can go pre-fire through a wall or shoot you from super far away. I'm going to assume that's what happens, especially after playing this, because there are times that I'm not doing hardcore mode, and these guys will just plank me from across the map using a pistol. Still, it's nice to come back and play the VR games I've been meaning to play for a while, from Blade & Sorcery to Tactical Assault VR, and even Hard Bullet with whatever updates they do. But before the end of the video, this is what I want to talk to you guys about with Tactical Assault VR, is that they added two updates, one for being able to add a bunch of new guns into it, as well as a couple light machine guns, which I do like a lot, though I haven't tried inside of a mission yet. 
but instead I've been doing the room randomizer as well as the fire range for trying out the different fire rates and see how well accurate it is from super far away. But anyway, when it comes down to the different updates, those were the main two I wanted to talk about was the weapons update and the light machine gun as well as the new operation for Tactical Assault VR. If you wanted to ask me, is the game worth it? I'd say yes, especially for a VR game because not only is it fun to play, but it's also very tactical and you get into some sweet-ass firefights later on, even against an AI. The game does have PvP, but you don't see many people play it. They're mostly doing the co-op thing, going up against the AI in hardcore mode and seeing how far they go. But anyway, I've been one nut punch and this has been the Tactical Assault VR video talking about Operation Hammerfire and the previous update beforehand, which was the weapons upgrade stuff, doing the remodels for the weapons and adding some more in. Still, when it comes down to early access games in general, there's not a whole lot coming out. I haven't seen a lot of patch note stuff besides some games that have gone from early access to full release and then not really much else after that. Like, for example, Sunken Land, they haven't really done anything after the whole biome deal. And when it comes down to Hard Bullet, they did add something, but it was like quality of life improvements and some other fixes. Not a whole lot but actually something kind of to do. So, I mean, I'm going back to the VR games, talking about Tactical Assault VR, and then I think my next one after this will be either Hard Bullet stuff or something to do with Blade and Sorcery because I've been liking the fighting lately. Whenever the developers come out with something new when it comes down to Blade and Sorcery, it's always nice to see because I did not know that there were not that many mods for that game when it came down to Steam. I was actually playing Blade and Sorcery Nomad, which is the Oculus Quest store game version, and it's not the full release title, actually. It's something completely different. But I've seen more mods on there than I did on Steam, which really confused the shit out of me. So... That was kind of new and a little bit different to do. But like I said, thanks for watching the video, everybody. And I'll see you later in the next one.